Hi there, creative friend, Clara Narte here. In this video, we are exploring the trends in textile art for 2019. And I have no other person here but the executive director of SACWA. SACWA is an international professional organization that supports the art quilt, promotes the art quilt, and the people who make them and Sakwa is celebrating its 30th anniversary this year. So grab a cup of coffee or tea and come back and listen to me chat with Martha Silman of Sakwa about the current trends in textile art. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Great. Go All ahead. right. Okay. Now we're in good. Um, okay. Right. So I was thinking about the trends mm -hmm. this morning, and I do a lecture on the top ten trends. So um, it's something that I pay, that I do pay attention to. Um, right so you're now, the perfect person to talk to about this. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I would say the biggest trend is uh, political. Mm. that just as you know sort of all over the place in uh, in our uh, society politics is front and center and that's being reflected in the art okay. quilts that people are making mm -hmm. that there's always been politics but um, it's been a very small minority and now um, because it's all over the place, you're seeing a lot of people making political statements, whether it's about politics itself, or it's about the environment, or it's about a social issue. There's a lot of statement pieces being made. Um, and I see that as a, a real trend and um, as a change. Good. That's excellent. The question I have about that is, one thing I have read is that usually when you have a political bent to your artwork, it's hard to sell it. So um, these people making political art quilts, are they, um, do they have any intention of selling or is it they just want to express um, themselves? I think it, it's just the need to express themselves mm -hmm. um there are you know some of them do sell to people who have a similar concern mm -hmm. um but i think that um the drive between them is to feel that you have a voice mm -hmm. and that you are entering the the dialogue that's going on all around us mm -hmm. um in the way that you can best express yourself mm -hmm. um, often when i interview artists <clears throat> one of the things they will say is that they don't feel comfortable expressing themselves in words. And so their art is how they can find a voice. Right. And so I think that's, that's exactly what's going on right now. Okay. That's wonderful. The other, the other big trend that I'm aware of, um, and I'm, I'm seeing it from a real historical perspective is when we did, the book, um, which, you know, is the history of the art quilt movement. One of the things that I really noticed is how quilting has changed. Mm -hmm. So the early art quilts that were made in the, in the 60s and 70s, mostly the quilting was being done by hand. Mm -hmm. and people were, were just starting to use sewing machines. Um, as time goes on, you see a huge shift. And so hand quilting now is the exception. Mm -hmm. But what you're seeing is that in the last 10 years or so, with more and more people getting long arm machines, long arm machines and mid arm machines, um, having the quilt top be very densely quilted by machine mm -hmm. has become more and more the norm. So the early quilting, not only was it a lot done by hand, but it was very simple, you know, just following the outline of an applique piece or stitch in the ditch for pieces that were being pieced together. 
Um, and maybe a very simple filler, a grid or clamshells in the background. Now, more and more, the standard seems to be that every square inch is densely quilted and you're seeing things like matchstick quilting where the lines of quilting are only a sixteenth of an inch apart. Mm. And so that's a huge shift. Mm. Um, and it's being driven be by the technology because some people are able to do it on their long arm machines, even people who are using a domestic machine um, are you know, being pushed towards that same standard. Okay. Um, and the third trend I would say is the use of recycling materials. Um, using and using unexpected materials mm -hmm. but um you know looking for where can we reuse rather than buying new f new fabric and that is a um, trend that is in the general public Gen general mm -hmm. humans are trying to um reuse things instead of buying new things so that is exactly. also reflected in the art cult um world yeah yeah that's beautiful so, um, you know, I mean, there, then there are small things like um, when I started quilting in the late 80s, early 90s, um, one of the things that I really liked was that a lot of people were doing a lot of embellishments. Mm. Um, so um, people like Susan Shy and Pamela Allen and Therese May were just encrusting the surface of their quilts with beads and um, with buttons and with found objects. Mm. And that really has disappeared. Mm. Not completely. If you can see behind me on the wall, mm. there's a piece by Kate Crossley from England. And she, part of the reason I love her work is because it's covered with things. And <laughs> I really love the little miniatures. Mm. But generally speaking, there's very little embellishment being added to quilt top surfaces, and that's a change um, from where things were. Um, but they're much simpler surfaces, and a lot of the, um, the interest is being carried by surface design and by the quilting. When we talk about um, going back to doing things slowly and getting away from the mm -hmm. screen, and how do you see that um, reflected in the quilt world? I think that, that that's a growing trend, mm. the slow quilting movement, mm. you know, so you're along with slow food and slow this and slow that. Um, and I think that the appeal of quilting generally is that it's something you're doing with your hands mm. that it's, and not interacting with a screen, although mm. obviously sewing machines have screens right. and people you know form communities through the internet mm -hmm. but i think that that's the appeal of quilting when you talk to quilters about why why are you using fabric rather than paint mm -hmm. they'll start to gesture with their hands they <laughs> want to touch it mm -hmm. and um yeah, it's certainly true for me too. It's the tactile experience. Mm. And that's something that our day jobs generally don't include. Right. You because know? I see that although people are moving towards using a lot of stitching, you still see people incorporate some hand stitching mm -hmm. in the in the work, even though they have machine stitching in the work, just mm -hmm. a little bit of it to uh, maintain that ability to do it on a slow basis definitely television or travel mm -hmm. and I, I still see that a little bit of that is still going on because people i i would say it's a growing amount if mm -hmm. you look at the pieces that were donated for the benefit auction mm -hmm. so this year we got 443 of them and um when you go through and look at them a very large percentage incorporate hand work yeah yeah. yeah, so I think that's really interesting too, is interest in um, not hand quilting so much as embroidery, things that are more visible. Mm. Um, when people talk about slow quilting, they often will use the word mark making, the mm. hand of the artist, mm. is that's part of what they want is to see, is to be able to show this was made by, by a person. Me. By an artist, yeah. Yeah, 
Okay. Um, the other question I have is, who is exhibiting artwork now? What would you see as the typical um, person who shows their work at exhibitions? Because not everyone shows their work. Some mm -hmm. people do it for the fun of it. But right. um, who is going out and trying to show their work to the world? I think, I mean, I think it's a matter of degree. I think that um, generally when people make something, it's because they want to share it. Mm. So, and it, whether you do it in a formal exhibition or you take it to your local Sakwa group or whatever and do show and tell, you want to share it. You want to um, be with other people and have that interaction through your art. Mm. Um, I think whether or not you exhibit, um, it, you know, it's a personal preference and it often um, has to do with how confident you are in your, in your work and in yourself. I think that people who um, only want to stay in show and tell, it's not, has nothing to do with the quality of the work. It has to do right. with their sense of self-confidence. Um, and um, I think that there are a lot of really, really talented artists who don't have enough self-confidence to exhibit. And, and that's a shame because it limits how many people get to see the beautiful things that they're creating. And I think one of Sakwa's big um, benefits is to try to uh, provide a, a place where people feel empowered to um, exhibit what they're creating. Yeah, Sakwa does a wonderful job with that because I remember when I joined Sakwa that I wasn't confident even um, coming out to speak, but because of the small groups and the nature of the uh, meetings, it gives you the confidence to um, build up that ability to come up and speak and show your work and share your work. And sharing your work is always a positive thing for the maker. So it's, it's a good thing that you get that um, avenue, that platform to be able to grow and um, eventually share your work when you are comfortable doing so. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, another question I have is about techniques. What are the maybe three main techniques that you're seeing in the work that is being done right now? Um, we talked about um, the increase in the density of machine quilting. That's definitely one. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, um, the, one of the other things that has been um, trending for a while, but is going to continue, is the interface between photography and quilting. Mm -hmm. um, that people are, are still doing a lot of experimentation with how to translate what they take with their, with their usually their phone cameras, mm -hmm. um, on, into their work with fabric. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm seeing less of just a straight uh, printout on fabric and then do dense thread painting on top there. I mean, that's still a very popular thing, but people are continuing to experiment a lot with how to translate one type of image into the other. Um, and, and then and I think the other thing that you and I already um, touched on is uh, looking for materials and how they can be repurposed. Tea bags are something that I'm seeing all yeah, over that's the a place. huge trend now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, which is which is so fun. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, who would have thought? But it makes sense that the fabric that's used to create the tea bag has to be strong enough to be plunged into boiling water. Yeah. And so, you know, you can then reuse that. And of course the tea, you know, dyes the fabric. And, um, you know, I've seen some really wonderful things. Yes, yes, that's, that, that's true. I saw um, Libby Williamson's work and yes. it, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. yes. I work with yeah. tea bags, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That's I, 
I, there's a piece in my abstract and geometric book by a Swiss artist named Cecile Trentini, yeah. who uses makeup removal pads as a repeating element because they're, they're white round circles. Uh -huh. And so it creates a beautiful visual element. And then behind them, she has different colored squares that she created and it's a great piece. Wow. But part of what makes it fun is the un the unexpected surprise of discovering the you know what she used to create those repeating circles. That must be nice to see. That must be beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um let's see, we touched about I touched on almost everything already. We touched on um, reusing materials for, mm -hmm. and we did yeah. talk and, about. And, um, something that Betty Busby is really um, spreading the word about is non-woven materials. Mm -hmm. So she's going to hardware stores and uh, garden centers and looking for non-woven fabrics, which she's then incorporating into her work and then teaching. And they're interesting because they don't fray. Mm. So you, you don't need to do anything to the edge of these fabrics. Um, and you could get a really clean edge because mm. they're not woven. Mm. They're, I don't know, fused together, I guess is how the fibers stick together in some way. And um, she's um, been posting on Instagram and Facebook about a piece that she's working on right now with a lot of beautiful fish. Yes, I've and, seen that. And, um, you know, it, so that's really interesting too, mm. is just looking beyond the standard silk and cotton and, mm. <clears throat> to to seeing what else can be incorporated um, into your quilt. Um, Talking about Betty Busby reminds me about 3D work. What do you think about 3D work in textiles and what that, where the trend is? Yeah, going? that was another one that I was going to say um, is um, both um, an increase in how many people are working in three dimensions, and also even if for people working in two dimensions. Um, mounting on stretcher bars or framing um, rather than letting the edges um, be just uh, you know, sewn. Um, but yes, we are seeing a lot more 3D pieces and not just from Betty. And, um, and that's why there's a call for entry out in February for 3D expression um, because we think that there are now a lot of artists in Sakwa who are working three-dimensionally, and it would be really interesting to put together an exhibition just of those pieces um, to be able to uh, show how you can take this one medium and do such a variety of things with mm -hmm. it. So I'm really excited to see what people submit well, because I think it'll be really great. I want to circle back to um, people putting their work on stretcher bars and um, framing them. What do you think is driving um, people Sales. to do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, um, it, it's an easy way, especially with smaller pieces, <clears throat> to indicate this is a piece of art. It's not a potholder I've put up on the wall. Um, and I think that, I think it's because it's just, easier for people who are not in the quilt art community to understand that the, it's a piece of art that they're looking at by put by using the the stretcher bars or frames um which immediately signifies this is art um okay. rather than you know a, a blanket or mm -hmm. you know um because if you, I'm sure you've had this experience of being at an exhibition and people who are not art quilters will come in and say, oh, these aren't quilts, this is art. Yeah. And I think, I think putting it in the framing devices that people are used to seeing for paintings mm -hmm. sends that message right away. And so I think it's, it's easier to convince 
um, people that th the value is there. Mm. If they know, oh, this is a piece of art, because they're not going to pay for a potholder, but they right. will pay if it's, you know, clearly something that you would display on your wall. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. The other question I want to ask is um, about exhibitions, galleries, uh, museums. What is the response towards um, textile? fabric work and what has the response been in the past and what trend do you see um, going forward? I'm hoping that we're seeing a trend towards um, greater acceptance. Mm. Um, <clears throat> you know, that certainly is the reason for SACWA's whole exhibitions program is, yes, it's a way for our members to share their work, but the underlying hope is that by exhibiting in as many different places as we can, we actually are going to change people's perception and make it be just part of what's expected. You can go to see an exhibition of oil paintings, you can go to see an exhibition of fine photography, and you can go to see an exhibition of art quilts. And, um, I think that we are seeing more and more museums and galleries be willing to um, exhibit. And the feedback that we get is that they're very excited mm. about um, how things worked out for them because they get more traffic, mm. um, usually for um, an art quilt exhibit than you know, the whole rest of their time um, put together because that's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. People connect with quilts in a way that they don't connect necessarily with paintings because they have um, some kind of frame of reference. It, they um, they're less intimidating, um, and I and then people come and they are surprised, surprised. in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So, I mean, that's, you know, sort of the whole rationale behind what we're doing is to try to change people's perception. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you have any final thoughts about trends, what to expect, um, where this is going? Um, if we are going to have this blow up, are we going to have youth coming in? Because it looks like the average age of the art quilter is maybe 60s. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, yeah. I, I'm not sure. I think that um, when we've had panels of um, fiber art students do presentations at the different conferences, um, they seem to be much more interested in installations. Now, and that may be because they're students, mm. um, <clears throat> but they're very interested in, in political statements mm. um, or um, I, I would say maybe autobiographical work. Mm. Um, but work that is fleeting. Um, you know, it, it, they make it, they exhibit it, and then they take it apart. Um, so I don't know how much we're going to see this adopted um, as something that younger people do. My observations are that the people who are interested in this tend to be um, people um, who have um, finished the, the career climb, they've finished raising their families, and they now have time to express themselves creatively, where before they were too busy taking care of other people or, or growing in their, their careers. And um, so I think that um, at least for now, I'm not expecting that the average age is going to change, but I also don't think that it's just this group of people. I think that as more people reach that point in their lives where they have time for themselves and maybe the extra money to invest in fabric and machines and things, that you know, will continue to recruit people reaching that point in their lives. 
um, and looking for this creative outlet. Um, but it, because supporting yourself in this medium is so difficult, I'm not sure how many younger members we're ever going to have um, because the price points aren't there mm. to be able to support yourself. The people mm. who support themselves in art quilts are people who um, teach mm. sort of continually. And that's very difficult with a young family. Um, you know, it, it's, um, it's, it, it's just a difficult way to make a living. And that's so, a very important yeah. point because I, I did interview um, Joel Cunningham once and we talked mm -hmm. about that. And he said something similar to that, that if the economics were there, you would see more men um, in art quilting, but men are more like, we want to see the money and the money mm -hmm. is not there. So <laughs> yeah, that's I, why I, you don't yeah, see I mean, them in You there. have a few people like Joe, like Ricky Timms, um, who have found a way to, you know, make a living mm -hmm. at it, but it's a lot, it it's, requires a lot of creativity mm -hmm. to, to find a niche that will, will generate income. Mm -hmm. um, and it usually involves a lot of travel. Mm -hmm. um, and um, for women... Not everyone that, is willing to do that much travel. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. No, and if you have kids, it becomes very, very difficult. Right. Thank you Great. so very much. Oh, my pleasure. It's been wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, click below and subscribe for more inspiration, creativity, and tutorials for your textile art journey.